Hey, it's Lauren from Radio World. I want to talk to you guys today about transducer selections. As you can see, there's all kinds of different transducers. It's going to depend on what you want to accomplish with different sonar beams and then what type of boat you have. So let's take a closer look. So the first style of transducer we're going to look at is a transit mount. These are the most common that would come packed with units. This particular one here and this one here are two very common ones. You'll find one a Lowrance, one a Hummingbird. Uh, shape is fairly similar. Uh, to accomplish just your traditional dual beam, 283 kilohertz. This one here is a side imaging one, which is a little bit longer. They're, they're going to range from about 6 to 10 inches, and a down imaging transducer will be very similar to this, just a little bit narrower. These type of transducers are going to be best suited for on uh, aluminum boats or um, just general fishing boats, some bow riders as well you'll see them on. A um, couple others up here are some upgraded ones. These are both from Airmar transducers. And while they'll look very similar, there's a couple differences internally. This one here is a very popular one. It's a P66 5200 kilohertz transducer. This one is a multi-element chirp transducer. Inside there's various elements that'll send different frequencies down all at the same time for units that are capable of running uh, chirp frequencies. So these, these will range starting at around $100 and then up into uh, the $300 price range and up upwards of $500. Side imaging transducers will be around the $500 price range as well. So these transducers here are through-haul transducers. You can see you're going to have a shaft that will, uh, a hole will have to be drilled based on the diameter of it through the hull and then the transducer is fed up through and a nut goes down holding it in place and obviously you'd seal it up correctly. This is one of the most common style transducers for through-haul mounting. It's called a flange mount transducer. This particular one is an Airmar P319. It requires a two-inch hole to, uh, to feed it up through the hull. This is what would be sticking below the hull. So your hull would be right here. Nut comes down, tightens it, and holds it into place. These will, are available with various ends on them. So you can get one for Garmin, Lowrance, uh, Raymarine, just about any manufacturer out there. So another style of through-haul, which is generally used more just for depth, uh, transmitted over an NMEA 2000 network, um, is this style here. So it's very similar to the one we just looked at, but there's just a, uh, this is just an insert that would go in your hull. This is a, actually a blanking plug, but the transducer will have a cable coming out of it, which will just feed down in through there. There's gaskets in there to, to hold it into place. That will go through your hull, and the nut just tightens down on it. These ones too can also be removed while in the water. This flapper here will prevent uh, a lot of water from coming in and you can swap out the blanking plug for the actual transducer. So this transducer here is a elongated version of what we just looked at. These actually have side imaging uh, elements in them so you'll be able to use a, a side imaging transducer on a boat that requires a through-haul mount. Um, these are also available for boats that have a, a very significant V to the hull uh, in a left and right pair, so one for each side so the keel doesn't block the, the, the one signal. These oftentimes will require a fairing block like this to adjust for hull angle, and I'll show you what that's all about. So these fairing blocks are designed to allow a transducer like this to be mounted on a boat that has a significant dead rise to the hull. What you would do is measure the dead rise and then cut the fairing block accordingly. This would be mounted inside the hull with the nut of the transducer going down on it. This would be externally and there is a groove in here for the transducer to go into. Okay, so the next type of transducer we're going to look at is in-haul transducers. We'll start with this style here. This is uh, very similar to the transit mount transducer that we earlier looked at, but with a flat face on it. So what you would do with these is get some extra fast setting epoxy and mix that up and epoxy the transducer through the hull. That'll shoot through fiberglass only, has to be three quarters of an inch or less, and it has to be pure fiberglass. These transit mount transducers can also be mounted in the hull like that. Take 80 grit sandpaper, rough them up, and you can stick them down also. You're gonna wanna use the sandpaper on this as well, and make sure the hull is very clean, no oil or anything like that, that would hinder the bond of the epoxy. So the only issue with mounting a transit mount transducer is the internal temp sensor will read inside the hull. So if you do purchase one of these optional through hulls, many of them will come with a remote temp sensor, which you can feed outside the hull and give you uh, the actual water temperature. So on the reservoir housing that we're going to epoxy into the hull, there's a hash mark up here. What we would do is just align the transducer, insert it, and then rotate the transducer where these marks indicate what degree dead rise the hull is so it can be a variable degree from 2 to 22 degrees uh, so this will accommodate just about any boat out there. 
So with through-haul transducers, don't worry about drilling a hole in the hull of the boat. It's a very common practice, and if it's done right, you shouldn't have any issues. So for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video if it was helpful to you. A nut will come down on it and then fill it with mineral oil. The transducer then goes inside. Hold on, I got it. <laughs> and as long as it's done right, you have years of, of trouble free. Why? Like I was right there.